This is the last video for lecture outline five, yay. Uh, and it covers hydrated ionic compounds. And we'll see hydrated ionic compounds from time to time in this course. We do know how, need to know how to name them, so that's what we're gonna talk about. And uh, hydrated ionic compounds are uh, oftentimes mined straight out of the ground. Um, and what they mean is that you have an ionic compound like calcium sulfate, and then there's a dot two H2O, a dot some number of H2Os. And it means that this is a picture, uh, a black and white picture of calcium sulfate. And when it forms in the solid phase, water molecules get trapped in there. And so this is one formula unit, because these are formula units. These are ionic compounds as well, ionic compounds. So this is one formula unit. And one formula unit includes calcium sulfate and it includes two H2O molecules. If you look inside this structure, you will see that the simplest picture includes calcium sulfate and two water molecules. So really three separate things, but uh, that's the simplest picture. Now, um, naming of this, oh, and so this, uh, well, let me give you the name, calcium sulfate dihydrate. They're going to use the same number prefixes that we just talked about. And calcium sulfate dihydrate, when it's taken out of the ground, is called gypsum. And uh, there are large gypsum mines where they get this. And if you uh, then heat it up, well, when you heat it, uh, these waters, which are called waters of hydration, when you heat water, it evaporates and the same kind of thing happens here. You heat it and some of the water evaporates as a gas, leaving you with a new substance. This new substance actually is the only place I've ever seen a half in a chemical formula. And the name of this is calcium sulfate hemihydrate. That's why we gave you that hemi before. And hemihydrate is one word, just like dihydrate is one word as well. And this is called plaster of Paris. Oh, I think Paris should be capitalized. Plaster of Paris. And what you do is you mine it, you heat it up, and then you buy plaster of Paris and at least in the 19th century, and uh, also in my house, which was made in the mid 20th century, you add a little bit of water back in, and it forms a solid material called plaster that you can then plaster, <laughs> as a verb, on walls to make walls. And they don't do it anymore. They use typically, well, they don't do it so much anymore. They typically use what's called sheetrock, in which this process has already been taken care of for you and you just buy the big sheets. Uh, but back in the day, and uh, up until at least the mid 20th century, they made walls using plaster and uh, lathe usually in the United States. But uh, what we're focusing on is naming of these, that adding heat to a uh, hydrate, uh, causes the waters of, of hydration to leave the formula. And in general, you can get all of them off, but here you're still having half still attached to the calcium sulfate. Um, more examples and more naming. This is going to be copper two sulfate.
Five is going to be penta, so pentahydrate. When you add heat to it, you get anhydrous copper sulfate because, and technically the name is just copper two sulfate, sorry, copper two. But sometimes because there's more than one copper sulfate, it will be called anhydrous. Anhydrous. And anhydrous is just a word that means no water. And anhydrous, that's an H right there, anhydrous, is a word that actually has more useful uh, uses than just hydrates, but we'll run into it pretty much just here. So the name of this is copper 2 sulfate. It is sometimes called the anhydrous form, um, whereas this would be called a hydrated form. And um, here's a nice video of turning copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate into copper 2 sulfate, the anhydrous version. Um, not too long either. Epsom salts, another common um, material, is uh, MgSO4 uh, dot 7H2O. And its name would be magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. And please write that down. I'll be looking for it in your notes. 